There's nowhere to run, and there's nowhere to hide for perpetrators of one of the biggest crimes against humanity as Amazon Prime's Hunters goes worldwide for their second and final season. Let's take a look at the details of season two of Hunters. I'm Joey C, let's go! New season, new opening, new game! The first season uses chess as a central metaphor between the careful maneuvering of the hunter and the hunted. That's true. And the opening cast the members as chess pieces underlines all that wonderfully. Now that the stakes are global, they've gone and gotten themselves a new global game. Perhaps one more... riskier? After exposing Meyer as the wolf and shooting him for it, Jonah has now taken up Meyer's mantle, complete with people kind of being weary of his decisions, especially the one in Spain that happened between seasons. It's not only Meyer's position he's usurped. He's dug into Meyer's actor's history and gone with Al Pacino's Serpico look, fitting as that was the story of a police officer that ends up at odds with the police when he outs corrupt police officers. It's usually hard to get a season two out of a character that you killed in season Season one. You cannot come back from that. But this is also the first time Al Pacino has done television, so why waste it just because his character is dead? The showrunner agreed, so they looked back at another iconic Al Pacino movie so they could have their dead Meyer and eat him too. You know, that sounded a lot better in my head. Godfather 2 saw Robert De Niro playing a young Vito during his rise to power in contrast to his son Michael. This time, it was the lengths Wilhelm went to protect his ability to pretend to be Meyer. Some comparisons were subtle, others were as subtle as a sledgehammer, like the one that caught us up on what Sister Harriet was up to. We see her uncharacteristically frolicking in the Alps while singing songs. Yeah. This nod to the sound of music was more than just a passing silliness. Showrunner David Wilde told Entertainment Weekly, There has been a history of romanticizing certain elements of war throughout film. So this was an opportunity to share a Jewish point of view that included certain characters that I wanted to indict in a way more emphatically than they may have been dealt with at the time. It was both a homage and a disruption of that classic film. While Ruth was alive in the present only for the first episode of the series, she's still been a constant presence throughout the series, and in season 2 the family expands a bit when we meet her baby sister Chava. Chava tells the story of her escape when a fellow camp prisoner was instructed to kill her but instead killed herself as an act of defiance. This contrasts with the story Wilhelm as Meyer told about the real Meyer being forced to kill camp prisoners in front of Ruth. The antics of season one that reframed the cause of the blackout of 1977 as a distraction set up by the Fourth Reich has had some big ripples in the last two years we've been away, including becoming the subject of a semi-nonfiction book about secret Nazi hunters with a familiar name. Episode 7 Jonah has cracked to the code and figured out the Fourth Reich's plan, even if it's a touch too late. The battle cry when they meet the Fourth Reich head on also names the episode and the book about their exploits. Shalom, mother... Bucker. So that seventh episode, The Home. Woo! Wow. It was like, uh, it was, it was a lot, okay? It was like a semiotics demolition derby. Unfortunately, I didn't really do that good in semiotics in school. Come to think about it, I didn't really do good in anything. We could do a whole video unpacking that, but let's just hit some highlights. The story is told as a fable to Hitler by Jonah. Which, when you think about Jonah explaining what happened, it gets even more surreal. To put a cap on this, when a German officer has to use the facility and runs out of toilet paper, he finds a secret door behind a large stash of, excuse my English accent, Muttergons toilet paper. And Muttergons is German for Mother Goose. The fable starts with a joke. The joke being that Germans do not have a sense of humor. That's tagged by the woman turning to the camera to affirm we're not interested in the man's joke. Oh! Oh, hello. Thanks to Deadpool, we all know this is called a breaking the fourth wall. Unless you already knew that. I don't know what you know. Well, as the man assembles his model house, he's literally and figuratively fixing the fourth wall. Even though they continue to look down the barrel of the lens, we eventually learn that we're seeing the POV of the ghosts that make up the house. Ghost is a common symbol and metaphor for the Jewish diaspora that's required them to learn to be invisible. The old couple, and later the ghost of their house, start to acquire quite the car collection as Nazi investigators arrive and never leave. 
leave. There'd be no psycho moment where the car finally sinks with the first car. An amphibious vehicle called a swim wagon, literally swimming car. You got some real Scooby-Doo operation over here. There's a running thread in season two of Nazis occupying the places and taking the things of the people subjected to the Holocaust. In a metaphoric nod to car nerds, the family shows up to move into the house in a Tatra T87. Tatra might not be a household name, but that shape might have seemed familiar. Dr. Porsche lifted liberally from the design of the Czechoslovakian car down to its air-cooled rear-mounted engine. No new major events were played out in season two, but there were some real world parallels. Millie's special legal Nazi hunting team reflects the OSI formed in 1979, expressly for the purpose of ferreting out Nazi war criminals living in the US. With the help of special sympathetic Catholic bishops and the neutral and fascist friendly Argentinian government of the time, it's estimated 9,000 former Nazi officials fled to Argentina under fake documents. David Weil noted that the the show is largely about, as he told EW, catharsis about German empowerment and wish fulfillment for Jewish kids like me who grew up wanting to reclaim power and that bringing back Hitler was to get that catharsis through the trial he never had. They had a better prosecutor than I would have been. If it was me, I would have literally just said, Hitler, the prosecution rests. Ladies and gentlemen and everybody else in between, we hope you enjoyed Hunter season two. What did you think of it? Let us know in the comments below. And as always, everybody, thanks for watching. Don't take my word for it. Believe for your own eyes.